Well, hi there. Well, we got a bunch of new updates uh, that came out today, and I wanted to go over them. And then a little bit later, I want to talk about some anti-vaccine conventions that took place very recently, too, right in the midst of these measles outbreaks. But let me go ahead and start with uh, the CDC. And today they put out new measles numbers in the United States. And what we have is since the beginning of the year to May 17th, 880 individual cases of measles have been confirmed in 24 states. So that's an increase of one state. This is up by 41 cases from last week. And this is the greatest number of cases reported in the U.S. in 25 years and since measles was declared eliminated in 2000. Now, two of the places that are being hit the hardest are right there in the New York City and surrounding area. And one is um, Brooklyn and Queens. And new data that came out today from the New York City Health Department shows us that as of May 20th, there have been 523 confirmed measles cases in Brooklyn and Queens since September. Most of these cases have involved members of the Orthodox Jewish community. So this tally um, in the past week has eclipsed the 500 mark. Uh, in nearby Rockland County, where another measles outbreak is going on, they too um, put out some new data. And what we see is as of May 20th, there have been 233 confirmed reported cases of measles in Rockland County. And here we have the vaccination rates of these confirmed cases. And if we take a look at these numbers, only 3% had known two MMR vaccine shots, the full series. Um, about 80% didn't have any MMR. Um, about 5% was under vaccinated with just one and more than 12% had an unknown vaccine status. Now, there was something very odd, at least I found very odd, um, going on in Rockland County itself, the place that has over 200 measles uh, cases in their outbreak. And that was essentially a anti-vaccine rally right there in Rockland County. And you had some very interesting guests. You had Andrew Wakefield, uh, the British doctor who study linked measles vaccines with autism which of course was later widely discredited. He, was, he appeared via Skype, uh, according to the report, to offer an almost apocalyptic vision of a world in which vaccines were giving rise to a deadlier immunization resistant disease. And then we had uh, this rabbi uh, Handler, who didn't have a lot of real good things to say either. He, and he was actually calling um, uh, calling the situation essentially some kind of a racist situation. It says Rabbi Handler, a 77 year old from Brooklyn who said he was a Holocaust survivor, set the tone for the night claiming that Jews were being persecuted as disease carriers and were being attacked on the street in New York City for sneezing. And he's also called out uh, Mayor D Bill de Blasio calling him some choice words, some names, um, uh, comparing him to Kaiser Wilhelm of Germany. Some really crazy stuff going on there. Um, then you get to the physician that was there, and his name is Dr. Lawrence Pilevsky, and he is known for being cited in pamphlets circulated in the, in the New York City area that urge women not to get their children vaccinated uh, at the rally, he talked at length about mutating viruses and falsely claimed that failed vaccines were producing a new strain of measles. And people are sitting there listening, they're writing, taking notes, uh, clearly you have to be more confused than ever listening to this stuff. 
Um, then he goes on to say, is it possible that the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine that is somehow being given in this lot of communities in Williamsburg and Lakewood and Monsey, and maybe in Borough Park, right? These are all areas of Brooklyn and or um, Rockland County. Is it possible these lots are bad? He asked, referring to areas of New York and New Jersey with large ultra-Orthodox Jewish communities. Um, and then, of course, there was uh, Andrew Wakefield via Skype, <laughs> insisting on his innocence, went ahead to say, I wanted to reassure you that I have never been involved in scientific fraud. Okay. What happened to me is what happens to doctors who threaten the bottom line of the pharmaceutical companies. So this was all going on in Rockland County. Um, where there's an outbreak of 233 cases right now and a short 25, 30 miles from New York where there's an outbreak of over 500 cases in the Brooklyn area. So, I don't know, you tell me. Something doesn't smell right with that, right? And then, um, fortunately, there were people that spoke out against it. I mean, and one was uh, Rockland County Executive Ed Day. And you, you may remember him for instilling some very strict rules in Rockland County concerning vaccination. And he, he had some choice words to say for the uh, anti-vax conference. This is a national movement of people who are nothing but charlatans, conspiracy theories, and people spreading misinformation. Day goes on to continue goes on to say, the type of propaganda they spread is a danger to the health and safety of children within our community and around the world. And this article in the New York Times goes on to say, and which is probably very true, in many ways, vaccines are a victim of their own success. Years ago, people were intimately familiar with the suffering caused by diseases like polio, whooping cough, and measles. Today, they have been virtually eliminated, along with the memory of their terrible effects. Can't, can't argue with that, right? And uh, Paul Offit, Dr. Offit, up at um, the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, he has some interesting, interesting things to say also. He goes, as a result, generations of parents have grown up more likely to be scared of the vaccine than of the disease. And speaking of this anti-vax convention, it's very easy to appeal to those fears. Well, not to be outdone, there's RFK Jr. And right around the same time that the anti-vaccine rally was going on in Rockland County, RFK Jr. was joining anti-vaxxers in Albany, New York. Uh, he was that they were rallying um, against the proposed strengthening of New York's vaccination law amid the worst measles outbreak in decades. A measure has been introduced to eliminate the religious exemption for vaccinations. And here's uh, here's what RFK Jr. has to say. They're telling us now that they're going to censor Facebook because they want to get rid of misinformation about vaccines. But we're just talking about science. We're giving them peer review. You'll never hear peer review from a vaccine proponent, Kennedy claimed. Well, okay, not exactly true. I have a Facebook page that has about 70,000 followers. And there are frequently debates with the pro-vaccine crowd and the anti-vaccine crowd concerning different articles that are published. And the anti-vaccine crowd do not typically bring peer-reviewed articles. What they typically bring are articles from natural health websites and that kind of stuff. It's the pro-vaccine people that do bring the peer-reviewed articles over and over. I see it all the time. So what RFK Jr. is saying is not exactly true. 
And let me go ahead and close out with this. And other than Dr. Paul Offit, this gentleman is one of the better proponents of vaccines and takes some of the most abuse for that. And that's uh, Professor Peter Hotez over at Baylor. And it's, you know, it's not just the MMR vaccine that they're lobbying against. It's many others. And in this tweet, he says, sadly, at this current rate, the USA will be one of the last countries to eliminate cervical cancer. A consequence of an unopposed anti excuse me, anti-vax lobby targeting HPV vaccine. So their HPV vaccine is bad too. Our nation has senselessly condemned a generation of girls and women to cancer over what? Key, very key here. Absolutely nothing. And that's really true. So I guess my question is, what will it take? Right? What will it take for them to stop pushing this stuff? I see people on my Facebook page saying, well, yep, no deaths again. No deaths again. Lots of cases, lots of rashes, no deaths. What will it take? Will it take one death of, from measles in the United States to start changing people's minds? Will it take 10, 100, 1,000? I don't know. Will it take the reemergence of polio? I don't know. Will it take a diphtheria outbreak? You know, something incredibly serious like diphtheria. Is that what it would take? I don't know. But clearly we're headed down, we're on a really bad path and it seems to be only getting worse. And the fact that they are holding anti-vaccine rallies, um, catering to the Orthodox Jewish communities around the New York City area who are must be clearly confused hearing this and that from the health officials and then this, that, and the other from Andrew Wakefield and, and, and others. It's a bad situation, but uh, I want to thank you for watching. And don't forget to check us out at the website, OutbreakNewsToday.com, the podcast, Outbreak News Interviews, which can be found on the website, on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, and Spotify. And the Outbreak News This Week radio show, which is aired Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time in the Tampa Bay area on AM 1380 The Biz or online streaming at 1380thebiz.com. And check out our social media presence, Facebook at Infectious Disease News and Twitter at BackDman63. Outbreak News TV is a production of The Global Dispatch. Copyright The Global Dispatch Incorporated 2019.